Alright guys, this is um, our Alpha Plus class. I'm Mason Hawk. I'm Parker Pellin. And our camera guy here is Austin Zeromsky. So today we're going to be showing you how to install a motherboard, power supply, and your CPU into a case. So if you were doing a fresh build. Alright, so guys, we're going to go ahead and start off. First things first, I'm going to be grounded. So, now what we're going to do after we've been grounded, it's safe to grab a hold of any electronics using the anti-static bracelets. So, now what you got to do, when you're putting this in, you want your cover plate to line up with all of your inserts, and then you want all the holes that you're going to screw your motherboard down onto all lined up. So as you see, we already have all the things that were nice, but we're only going to show you these first few steps. So. It's usually good to have your screws screwed in in various places across the board to get the most support. Now, the more you have in, the more structurally supported the motherboard will be into the case. Also, having adding risers, if you can, will also help hold the board up to prevent from you pressing down parts and it cracking the board by accident. Alright, guys. As you can see, all the places where he's screwing in holes, I'm just going to use another screwdriver. So, I'm going to ground myself too real quick. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. He's screwing in these screws in certain spots. If you look closely at where he's been screwing them, they have little markers like this one right here in this corner. I don't know if you can see it. It's got these little studs around it. Those are basically kind of like little pieces to ground it. Alright guys, so now that we have it officially screwed in, um, our next step, we're going to install the processor, referred to as the CPU, which was this one, Parker. What was it made by? Intel. It's an Intel. So very common. It's an Intel 5, or i5. Intel's a very common one. It's usually used for businesses, but AMD usually fine in gaming. Um, it's Ziff, right? Yes. So, guys, once you've been correctly placed it in, now, just a quick notice, whenever you're placing in a CPU, you can always line it up. There's a certain way to put it in. So, in this case, it, this clamp folds down top of it. It's got these little ridges on the side. But also, if you look on the back side, all you have to do is line them up. It's kind of like a puzzle piece. So, you just line up these corners and stuff to the placement, like that. You don't have to actually apply pressure. And all you have to do is do that. And it clamps in. That's how you line them up. Okay, next up, guys, we're going to apply some thermal paste. Just a little dab is all you need. Right in the center. And then it'll spread itself out once you place down your CPU cooling fan. So, guys, as he's installing it, this one, all it does is really plugs itself in and anchors itself into the holes that are outside of it. Now, you want to make sure you, when you put this in, that the cord is able to reach this pin right here, this, these headers. These, this is right here, as you can see, it's designated as the CPU fan. The reason why is because this header controls this fan exclusively and separately from all the other fans, because this fan will usually tend to run faster than your case fans, since your CPU will tend to get hotter than the case will. So, this also allows the motherboard to control this fan separately. Alright guys, so next up we're going to do the power supply. This is the, basically I guess you could say the heart, and then the CPU would be the brain. This gives it life. Now, it always be, probably wouldn't be best if ungrounded when you're using this, because chance of being electrocuted would not be fun. So, make sure all these cords are nice and steady. There you go. Oh, is that 
not right size. Yeah. Uh, I try to try that one right here. It's longer. There it is. That was pretty skinny in my mouth. That's a foreign. You were diagonal. The method of screwing in stuff like this is you go diagonal from each other and then you'll go vice versa on the other side. It's to prevent if, say, this thing was not leveled, it would lean in. So if you have it anchored in at two points across the corner, it supports it in until you can get the other screws and it's secured completely. Alright, so now the power supply is in, guys. Um, usually, we would be using a lot of these cables on here, but since we don't have any of the drives in, or the uh, CD, and the sometimes even graphics cards will actually take um, some auxiliary power to make them run. Since we're just doing this up for you guys right now, we're going to go ahead and show you the hookups of these. But first, let's go ahead and hook up these. These see are, these are the controls for the front panel buttons, USB, all this. Now, when you buy a motherboard, you usually get um, a booklet or some kind of pamphlet that will tell you how to do this. If you're a genius, you can remember it. Yes, <laughs> we've done it enough times. But not all of us are geniuses. So. It's taking me long to find it. And you got JUSBs, you know what that is? Reset switch. Now in this case guys, this actual motherboard does not need a graphics card. Um, it has onboard graphics. I believe so. No, it does not. No? No. Oh. That's what that Oh yes, yeah, right. This is this is a small a micro ATX. We're gonna plug this HD audio into the J odd. Other ones pretty simply labeled. Some of them will be different, all of them will be. Usually if they're made by the same company though, the layout's pretty much the same. This is a small board though. And there's bigger ones. As you can see, there's post here for a standard ATX. This is a micro ATX board. And this is a USB. And we're gonna plug it in the J USB. USB. Not really hard to figure that one out. <laughs> and um Alright, and we're done with that. So now guys, we're gonna go ahead and plug up the power supply. So this is a 20 plus 4 pin. It is separable. It has four pins on the end that will actually disconnect from it. And then this is our auxiliary, 4 plus 4. 2 plus 2. 4 plus 4. They call it a 2 plus 2. That's a 4 plus 4. Because this is a 20 plus 4, because it's 4. Yeah. <coughs> so, now that that's all hooked up, guys, the rest of these are for other things. Um, SATA. SATAs. This is what we would use for the hard drives right here, and then the CD. This is another auxiliary power cord. It's a yeah, that's um, the one I'm 6 more plus 2. With. 6 plus 2. And then more yep. SATAs, more SATAs. And then more boxes. More like if. If you don't have something that has Molex, then you can get a connector like this, which it has two SATAs at the end, so you can plug in any drives, and then it will convert. It's called a converter. It will convert into a Molex, so that you can plug it in, and you have an extension. And it converts any Molex into two SATAs. All right, guys. But thank you for watching.